The producer Ferat Alani has made a, a, an excellent feature film about Fallujah, which uh, explains the cause of the increases in congenital malformations in Fallujah, Iraq. Uh, and when we tried to put this up on YouTube, it was immediately taken down. So within two minutes of it being put up on YouTube, it disappeared with a message saying that um, the copyright was held by Canal Plus, which is the French company, the TV company, which funded the, the production of this film. So you can't see it. Anyway, I mean, in order to make sure that you can see it, what we have done is we've put it up on Vimeo. Um, and at the moment it still seems to be there on Vimeo. So I, I shall put a stripe underneath to show you where you can access it. And I strongly advise you to, to pull it down and to watch it because it, it's a very, very powerful film. And you have to ask the question why it was um, that it was taken off so rapidly. And when you look at it closely and you try to figure out why it was taken off so quickly, the answer is perfectly clear, because the people who took it down don't want it to be shown in the United States so people can find out uh, the, co the cause of the congenital malformations in Iraq, which is the uranium weapons that were used in Iraq by the uh, US-led forces in 2004. So Firat travels to Fallujah, and he interviews various people there, and discovers that there is, in fact, a large increase in congenital malformations there. Um, I, I have been involved in three papers now, uh, which are in the peer review literature, showing that there is this increase in congenital malformation and also a big increase in cancer. So we're looking for something that causes congenital malformations and cancer, and of course uranium uh, fits the bill. Um, in fact, there's nothing else that we found when we looked in the hair of the parents with congenital malformation that could have possibly caused the congenital malformations. Anyway, Furat goes there and then he, he comes here to Wales, to Aberystwyth, here, to talk to me about the measurements that we made where we found the uranium in the hair. And it was slightly enriched uranium, incidentally, which raises another load of questions. Uh, and then he went off to the United States and he talked to Doug Rocky, uh, who, who was... Uh, a um, in the military in charge of decontamination after the first Gulf War and who is now suffering from all sorts of diseases as a result of the exp his exposure to depleted uranium weapons as they then were and he talks to people from the Pentagon and from uh, uh, and also to interestingly to a, an American Gulf veteran called Gerard Matthews who is also suffering and this is Gulf War II 2003 veteran who is also suffering from all sorts of dreadful diseases and whose daughter has the same sort of congenital malformation that, we're being, that, that are being picked up in um, Iraq. So anyway, watch this film uh, and realize that there is a big cover-up of the effects of these weapons and pressure has to be brought on the authorities and on the military to stop using these weapons and to investigate the whole issue. Because I have to say that the large, uh, that the, there is a large amount of uranium circulating in the atmosphere now. So it's not just a question of people in Fallujah. It's also people in Iraq and people in Europe and people in the United States. The, whole, the, the, the concentration of, ur of uranium in uh, high volume air sample samplers at the Atomic Weapons Research Establishment in Aldermast in Berkshire, so we can actually monitor, we can monitor the levels of uranium in the atmosphere, and these levels have been just consistently rising ever since the first Gulf War. So, have a look at the film, download it if you can, and disseminate it all over the place, because it could well be that it will be taken down from Vimeo, because there's a big powerful machine out there to try and rubbish all this and to keep the evidence of this away from people. And bring pressure to bear on your senators and congressmen and uh, mem members of parliament or, or any powerful people or people with authority or influence to see if you can get this whole affair opened up and this issue raised in such a way that these weapons are banned. Thank you.